Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ramesh Ranganathan and Rob Beckett. Josh Widdicombe, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. <laughs> One clap for Rob. <laughs> we start with a game called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, teams, what's going on here? <laughs> Is it... New exhibition disappoints crowds at London Aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Labour's best hope? In fact, they've cryogenically frozen him until after the next election. <laughs> Is it Blue Man Group unveil latest member? <laughs> <laughs> He's probably joined the cast of Avatar 2, hasn't he? <laughs> the quest for unelectium. <laughs> 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 Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Will I ever be leader of them all? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the most depressing window in downtown Amsterdam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My worry about it is that he might, he might just have been caught obsessively watching one of those lights that kills flies in restaurant <laughs> kitchens. Is that what you see if you look in a mirror at midnight and say Miliband three times? <laughs> 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 okay, back to this. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, no, is, right. is it the Labour Party conference? It is, of course. Thank you very much, Josh Whittaker. You're absolutely right. It is, of course. Yeah, it is right. This is Ed Miliband at the annual Labour Party conference in Brighton this week where new party policies threaten to be overshadowed by revelations from former spin doctor <coughs> Damien McBride of infighting from Labour's past. How has his presentation of policies gone? My favourite policy in his speech was he said, um, if he's elected, he's not going to take his shirt off <laughs> in public. Yes. Well, I, I like that for two reasons. One, it's attainable. <laughs> uh, and the other one is he said, if he's elected, that's going to happen, which implies if he's not... He might just, like, streak through Parliament. <laughs> and that's the most effective way to get elected, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, if you say, listen, if you don't elect me, I'm going to take my top off and run through the streets. <laughs> we'll not be voting for him straight. Well, I'm, well, I'm, you, just, I'm... you just stand and slowly raise up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> get oh, yeah, that's coming off. Yeah. It's coming off, that yeah. That's that's like, that's are you ready for this jelly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a kind of an Ed Ball tradition at, at these conferences every year. Do you remember what it is? Plays a football match every year? He does indeed play a football match every year. <laughs> and every year we show photographs of him playing the football match <laughs> at the conference. <laughs> this, from, this is from two years ago. This is from two years ago. This is last year's photograph we have as well. Yeah. <laughs> They're the standard photographs. He kind of went for a very different look this year. This is this year's. Oh. <laughs> oh, amazing! That is, you know, okay. he's gone kind of... It's kind of saucy, if anything, yeah, he's gone. I mean, it's the one leg up in the kind of a... Like, uh, yeah, can you paint, imagine? Paint me like your French ladies, <laughs> Leo. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the far more entertaining uh, and comedically gifting uh, conference. In other news, what's going on here? No. <laughs> is, he, uh, is he in fact at Dover Ferry Terminal and he's waving goodbye to the foreigners? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be just Nigel Farage going, I'm in charge because I'm the most normal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the electable one. <laughs> I'm, I'm the safe face of you, <laughs> ah. that, I mean, that's actually how he always enters a room. He always walks in and goes, Farage! <laughs> <That's, laughs> yes. Is it Farage sells teeth for party funds? <laughs> <laughs> I know he, it's, it's, I know it's, he it's did. It's good that he I bought, bought the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, how many immigrants would you be happy with in this country? <laughs> his cook is cleaner, his gardener. <laughs> 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 the, uh, yes, it is Farage, obviously, at the, at the UKIP conference, uh, which gave more headlines than, 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 than Labour could possibly dream of, really. He was pretending still to be a man of the people, wasn't he? And uh, this is a man who used to be a stockbroker who went to public school. You think if he was truly a man of the people, surely he'd be called Nigel Farage rather than Nigel Farage. <laughs> you know? Nigel Farage. Right, garage, garage rather than garage, you know? <laughs> By all means, he might live in a village, I don't know, in a cotton. <laughs> yeah. Enjoys a sausage, quite possibly. <laughs> I mean, the trouble is, though, isn't it? People come over here and they can't pronounce our words, can they? It's an outrage. It's an outrage. <laughs> 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 
it is, it is funny though when you see him act, when he's being the sane member uh, of the party when he's the one clamping down because who uh, who does he destroy their party conference? Godfrey Bloom. Godfrey Bloom, yes. What did who, Godfrey Bloom say? He he went to a uh, women in politics uh, discussion and described them all as sluts. <laughs> and my main question is. When holding a women in politics set together, who is inviting Godfrey Bloom? <laughs> it's like having Tony Blair as Middle East Peace Ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> what was his uh, defence for calling them sluts? Well, Hilarious. he said that they, he called them sluts because uh, they didn't clean behind the fridge. <laughs> Very odd definition. <laughs> it is. is that an awful um, euphemism? No. <laughs> no. His argument was that the old meaning of sluts yeah. was people who are slatternly or unclean, uh, yeah. and that he didn't mean slags uh, at all, yeah. right? <laughs> Which is always a very weak point when you go, well, I meant sluts in the old 18th century, uh, well, not contemporary sluts. These women aren't contemporaries. Just look at them, slags? No. Uh, <laughs> It's such a massive story, like that overshadowed the whole conference. Like my my grandmother heard about it, and she lives in Bongo Bongo Land. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think I do think it's, it's a strange problem to choose anyway in terms of deciding tasks around the house because genuinely, who cleans behind the fridge? Am I? Am I have I missed a thing here? Well, how do you no. get behind yeah, the fridge? You'd have to move the fridge for a start, right? Well, you have to take out the whole fitted kitchen. If I ever came home, and my wife works it, but if I ever came home and found her cleaning behind the fridge, I'd have to stage an intervention and go, honey, this is, this is going too far. I just caught you cleaning behind the fridge. I don't think I can take this thing. It was enough. I, I could get on board with all of our urine being collected in jars, but I can't. <laughs> But behind the fridge is too far. This is too much. We need to get help here. <laughs> he went, uh, women are better at finding mustard in the pantry than driving. And I'm like, why are you hiding the mustard from your wife? <laughs> Who does that? Has she got a problem? <laughs> She's like, I'm two packs of Coleman's a day, doing lines and stuff. <laughs> Yellow all round her nose. Also, also, <laughs> every, every Sunday morning, yeah. he's out with a stopwatch going, OK, oh, yeah, yeah. you're making a ham sandwich. <laughs> no, oh, where's the mustard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He also he hit uh, a Channel 4 news reporter on the head with a brochure. Yes, he did. And apparently, right, this Channel 4 news reporter, <clears throat> he was hit so hard that he actually damaged his brain and he's now had to become a Channel 5 news reporter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so sad. <laughs> The, 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 we actually have this is the brochure, and, and the point that the uh, that is Michael Crick, I believe, was in. Was it Michael Crick? Michael Crick, yeah. yeah, very famous. Yes, Michael, Crick. Michael Crick. Michael Crick made the point that this is a brochure, and it's of their conference, uh, and it features uh, faces of about 270 faces of UKIP members there, and none of them, uh, well, they're all white, uh, and he said there isn't a black face on this, right? And he gave the brilliant counter argument, which is going, oh no, you're racist. Uh, <laughs> say, which is just one of the it's like arguing with an eight-year-old. There are no these, oh, these people are all white. Oh, they're white. Oh, is that wrong now? Oh, you're a racist. No, wait, I was, you're the racist. No, you're the racist. I mean, it's, <laughs> essentially. And then, and then just hit them on the head. It is a fine piece of footage. Do you know what's brilliant about this, though, about this brochure? Is yes. that illegal immigrants can cut out the pictures at just about the right size to make a false passport. <laughs> It's like a kind of racist version of Guess Who, where you'd go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are they black? No. <laughs> <laughs> they have a beard. <laughs> he, he, he said he wants to represent the Yorkshire women that always have dinner on the table when you get home. I was like, but no one wants dinner on the table as soon as you get in. You want to put your tracksuit bottoms on first, <laughs> have a cup of tea, play Candy Crush, and then <laughs> break from the fridge for an hour. I'm not going straight into a yes. toad in the hole. I've been working. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get me mustard out, haven't I, at first? <laughs> Okay, end of the round, the post with Josh, you and Gary. <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features David Cameron and Nick Clegg visiting a train factory. 
Well, thank you very much indeed, Nick. We're late again. I said we should take the Jag. You said if we're going to visit trains, we must go by train, and of course the bloody thing broke down. Mind the wall, Nick. Mind the wall. Mind that wall. <laughs> Mind that wall. <laughs> well done, Nick. I wish we could make you disappear permanently. Anyway, I tell you what, I'll do all the talking. You just stand there and smile in inanely. Right, good morning, everyone. I'm sorry we're late. Somebody fell under Eric Pickles at Hemel Hempstead. <laughs> And we've come on the replacement bus service. But now, would you please give a very warm welcome to the <clears throat> Deputy Prime Minister. <laughs> well, thank you for the warmth of that welcome. I'm wearing a red tie today to try and look more socialist uh, than my colleague. It's not really very convincing, is it? We're here to announce a massive £40 billion investment in high-speed rail. Please feel free to show your appreciation of the policies of the coalition uh, uh, government. <laughs> Well, high-speed rail is vital. Think of the advantages. If you are travelling to Birmingham soon, you'll be able to spend an extra 20 minutes in uh, Birmingham. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for your enthusiasm. That was an absolute fucking disaster. I hate trains. <laughs> oh, look at this. You see this picture I've downloaded? This is Nick Clegg's head on a woman's body, and up behind him, that's David Cameron. He's about to give him a right shot. Oh, hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. I'm, uh, I'm afraid we're lost, both here and in government. I wonder if you can help us find a way out. Oh, look, I wonder what you've got on your computer. Well done, you! <laughs> now we play a round called Gag Theft Auto 5. <laughs> this game involves Ramesh and Gary, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funnier. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is education. Who wants to come in that? Ramesh. Uh, I used to be a teacher, actually. Uh, I was a maths teacher. I wasn't a very good one. Uh, but as I found out, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, <laughs> you can get away with it for quite a while. Uh, but the problem is... <laughs> You're Ofsted coming, Ofsted coming, you've got an Ofsted inspector in the back of your class, I've got to make sure I'm doing my job properly. Yeah? Got learning outcomes up on the board, Pythagoras and trigonometry flying all over the shop, knocking it out of the park. <laughs> Kid in the front row's got a question, I'm straight in there. Yes, Timothy? <laughs> How can I help you? And then he'd go, why are you being weird? <laughs> right. So then I've got to convey to Timothy, without the inspector realising, that I am going to bloody end him. Right? <laughs> Because of political correctness, all textbooks have got to be multicultural nowadays, which means that every single question in every single maths book has got to have a white kid and a black kid in it. Or a white kid and an Asian kid in it. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have wanted to hang out with a kid of another colour. <laughs> if every time I met up with him, he wanted to do bloody maths. I don't know. <laughs> the questions you get in these textbooks are amazing. You get questions like, Philip thinks that the answer is eight. Dilip. <laughs> thinks that the answer is ten. Which one is correct? And then a kid would put his hand up and he'd say, I think Dilip's correct. And I'd say, why? And he'd say, oh, because Asian kids are bods, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> We had uniform at the school, I agree with uniform. The problem is they're very strict about it. We had a sixth form. Talking to sixth form lads about what they're wearing, absolutely not a problem. Got no issue with that. Talking to sixth form girls <laughs> about what they're wearing, something I felt a lot less comfortable about. <laughs> but what I actually found was if I just looked at them for long enough, they soon covered themselves up. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Gary. Let's see what you have. Let's spin the wheel. And so it is relationships. OK. How are you? <clears throat> I uh, used to suffer from premature ejaculation, which made me feel <laughs> selfish and bad for my girlfriend. Then she suggested I try this special cream that reduces your sensitivity. And it really worked, cos now I don't give a shit about her. <laughs> I bought a vegan friend of mine a fancy cookbook. Unfortunately, he said he couldn't accept it as it was leather-bound, which meant it was too heavy for him to lift. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a teenager, my mom always said, your bedroom's so messy, you'll never get any self-respecting girl to come back here. 
but luckily they weren't the ones I was going after. <laughs> I watched the director's cut of a porn film. At the end, he actually fixes the washing machine. <laughs> I was in a sex shop. I saw a dildo described as nine inches long and realistic. I thought, well, which is it? The Archbishop of Canterbury recently said he couldn't support gay marriage without first having a mandate. Honestly, if he's that bothered, I'll go out with him. <laughs> One time at a party, I chucked my car keys into a big bowl and everyone just stared at me and the trifle was ruined. <laughs> I was watching a really weird porno the other day that was just a fat man crying and wanking at the same time. <laughs> and then I realised I hadn't turned the telly on. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gary. OK, points for both of you. Come on back. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? <laughs> On the board are six categories. Ramesh, which category would you like? Science, please, Dara. Science, OK. <laughs> uh, your category is science. And the answer is 1.75 billion years. What is the question? Is it how long it would take Joey Essex to spell the word hypothetical? <laughs> Is yeah. it, what is <clears throat> the best before date for coal? <laughs> is it, how long will I wait for a girl to text me back before I'm sure she's not interested? <laughs> is, is it... <laughs> thank you. Is it how long it takes for a bowl of porridge to cool down? <laughs> uh, is it how long does a panda go between shags? <laughs> is it... Is it, is it, is it how long will it take my iPhone 4 <clears throat> to download iOS 7? <laughs> is it on my first trip to Nando's, how long did I sit at my table before realising you had to oh. go up to order? <laughs> oh, that's sweet. He's going, well, they're very slow in here. <laughs> <laughs> Trailing your napkin and wondering, like, well, I shall write a very harsh review of this. Uh, is, is it if you booked onto a Ryanair time machine, how far from where you want it to be <laughs> would you, in fact, do that? <laughs> Is it how long we've got on after it's too up to live on? That's absolutely right. Well yeah. done, Rob. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was, how many years maximum do scientists predict human beings have left on Earth? This is the news that scientists have estimated that the Earth could possibly support life for up to a further 1.75 billion years. And after that time, the planet would become uninhabitable. Why would it become uninhabitable? 1.75 billion years, they reckon, right, that then... The, the Earth is going to, like, get so hot because the sun will expand and the temperatures will soar and the oceans will disappear. And you're thinking, that is one hell of a long-range weather forecast, isn't it? <laughs> How hot does it need to get before I can call my house a villa? <laughs> yeah. Is it, like, 35 degrees or...? <laughs> I'm sure I've there's some architectural part of Villa as well, not just yeah, it's sunny. It's just, yeah. a, it's just a bungalow of a pool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to make much... I mean, I don't care anyway. It's not going to make much difference to me unless Omega-3 is more powerful than we ever imagined. <laughs> If you add 1.75 billion to the total time we've been on the planet as a species so far, mm. the total is... 1.75 billion. So <laughs> it's pretty much unlikely we're still going to be around at that stage. It's an unfair yeah. time for it to happen, though, isn't it? Just when the Eurozone will be coming out of recession. <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to be too hot in two billion years, whatever, it's ages away, it's going to be well nice for a good couple of thousand. And it, 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 a it, really not... nice temperature for a few thousand it's a years. Reaction, worry about isn't it? You know, oh, well, it's going to be uninhabitable by being too hot. But for a while in Britain, it'd be bloody lovely, wouldn't it? It'd be bloody lovely. <laughs> The worrying thing for me is that, you know, you think, well, it's going to happen in 1.75 billion years, and so it doesn't really affect me. But unfortunately, as a Hindu, I believe in reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm seriously worried that I might be a goat when the big... When the occurs, yeah. Can you come back as an oven glove? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not a scientist, but... So... You, you, so it's I, important I, I, that you said that at the yeah. start. Uh, <laughs> I've yeah. kind of read it. See if I'm right here, Dara. Yeah. So the sun is like Helen Mirren in that the older it gets, the hotter it gets. Is that how it works? <laughs> Essentially, yes. Because Helen Mirren, Helen Mirren started burning hydrogen. Uh, <laughs> but as... 
as she's grown older, she begins to burn helium and, and larger elements and until she eventually she'll, voice, then, she'll create iron and explode her outer layers across the gap. Are we still talking about Helen Mirren now? I, or the sun? I can't quite remember. Does this mean Helen Mirren is going to turn into a white dwarf? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that would yeah, be remarkable. At some point, it would be great if she did. <laughs> Hello, Helen. Hello. Uh, well, how are we talking? Like, inside of a McDonald's apple pie? Is that... Uh, it's going to be... You know how hot it's going to be? Every day, the sun is going to say, what a scorcher, yeah. and yeah. there'll be a picture of a girl on Bournemouth Beach. That's yeah, yeah. Right. Where, 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 where will we be? Will we be here? Or oh, we'll, we'll be on one of those... Uh, <laughs> the new sort of Gillies, or whatever it's called, or Kepler... Yeah. Kepler 22 B Gillies. Yeah, there, there are new there are planets that we there are thousands use. Thousands of planets, planets. aren't there? Yeah, the, the idea is that we would have moved to another planet. The, uh, in the in whatever it's called, the Goldilocks. Oh yeah, that the planet would be suitable for life. Yeah, but which means it's probably life on it. In which case, then we arrive essentially immigrants. It'd just be fantastic. <laughs> we arrive in a hideously ironic turn of fate. <laughs> we arriving. Oh hello, and some UKIP are running <laughs> Kepler 22 B. You go. Oh, we're not having those earthlings here. Oh, they'll drive prices here down. <laughs> yeah. Why is it called Goldilocks? Yeah. Goldilocks was is neither too hot nor too cold. Um, it's a porridge reference because that's apparently very important when you're a planet. <laughs> okay, let me explain to you basically. Bette Midler likes porridge, but Bette Midler doesn't like hot porridge. She likes kind of medium tempered porridge before she explodes and engulfs the entire planet. Uh, that's the way scientists always talk to each other about this stuff. Um, <laughs> when did Helen Mirren become Bette Midler? Oh, fuck, it's not. It was Helen Mirren. <laughs> She's Bette Midler! Uh, <laughs> yeah, we all have to shadow underneath Bette Midler's wings, uh, where it'll always be cooler under her wings. That's where the wind is. She's OK. My hero. In, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I can't believe it. Anyway, so. OK. What bad news did Ryanair have this week? Is it uh, nobody had excess luggage, so they didn't make a profit? Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Air, very much the UKIP of international airlines. Uh, That's a survey, wasn't it? It's a survey, yeah, which, which magazine way? that said that their customer service was uh, surprise, terrible? Surprise, surprise. There are no examples. Yeah, there was, was a which survey in which they were the worst of 100 well known brands, but they were the worst in terms of customer. This is unsurprising given that they, they have yeah. charged people for wheelchairs uh, in the past. They said that 99% uh, of complaints were dealt with within seven days. And you go, that is still too long to be on hold. <laughs> <laughs> they charge for everything, though, don't they? Yeah. You know, and you're thinking, you know, you could quite imagine being on Ryanair, hear a tannoy announcement, or there's been a loss of pressure in the cabin, and then a second tannoy hands up those people who want to rent an oxygen mask. <laughs> I'd pay for the oxygen mask, but I'd want to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I get really irritated on planes. I know it's there, but it's never, ever popped down. Has it ever popped down for I've you? Never, I've never had a pop down for me, no. No, really. but you, you know it, it popping down is a bad sign. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, <laughs> you don't want to go, great, uh, the air mask's <laughs> down. This is going to be great for us. <laughs> and then turn to my child and go, wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Very important that I do me first. <laughs> So we'll just have one for the entire family. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, it's like a buddy procedure at diving. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> They're thinking of actually charging. You can actually think of getting porn on Ryanair as a pay movie. You don't want the person sat next to you <laughs> watching porn on the flight, do you? Then pretending the entire flight to be trying to get something out of their pocket. <laughs> <laughs> If you were watching porn on a Ryanair flight, at least you could watch somebody being screwed in a more uncomfortable space than you're in. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to Rob, Ramesh and Andy! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear on a DIY show. Many people have written to us asking how you can make your house greener. Simple. Paint it green. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is, a perfect patio, and the police won't suspect a thing. <laughs> No, no, don't bother putting the kettle on there. We'll crack on with the work straight away. <laughs> the walls are plastered, and I'm a little bit shit-faced too, to be honest. <laughs> 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 
welcome to Bollywood Does DIY. Episode number one, change a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do that. <laughs> I'm Nick Knowles, and no matter how many DIY programmes I make, I'll never be as famous as my sister Beyonce. <laughs> This week on Grand Designs, two more middle-class tossers piss away their life savings on some glorified Wendy house. <laughs> After three hours of sawing, six hours of hammering and sanding all day, it's done. Finally, your neighbours have moved out. <laughs> So, for the best finish, rub vigorously up and down with a piece of sandpaper, but be warned, you may get a very sore penis. <laughs> <laughs> We've managed to double the price of this house in Middlesbrough. We put 20 quid in the biscuit tip. <laughs> uh, Jen's parents really helped us out with the budget on this project by dying. Drill the pilot hole, take the plasterboard fixing, but before you countersink the button, ask yourself this. Is it any wonder my wife left me for a table magician from Macclesfield? <laughs> 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 we sandblasted several layers of varnish off, but sadly, there was very little of the real Dale Winton left. <laughs> This week, John from Peterborough successfully put a roll of wallpaper up himself, so we're taking him to hospital. <laughs> <laughs> We've got 24 hours to renovate Sharon's house. Let's start by smashing her back doors in. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Beanie has helped Andy convert his semi into a full boner. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... <coughs> unlikely lines from a romantic novel. He gazed into her eyes and said, ''Is it better with this lens or this lens?'' <laughs> <laughs> Godfrey looked behind the fridge. He was in luck. She was a slut. <laughs> ''Will you make me the happiest man on earth? Will you marry me? Will you change your name? Will you become the next Mrs. Goaty Bollocks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the earth did move for me. I think they must have started fracking. <laughs> <laughs> As he looked into her eyes for the last time, he whispered in her ear, Always remember, we'll always have the bins behind Morrison's. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, 5-5, five, five, Alpha Zulu Tango, Grey Skoda Octavia, last seen heading towards M6. <laughs> I've been looking for you my whole life. iPhone maps are crap. <laughs> he made love to her like no man had ever done before. It was so intense, she dropped her chips. <laughs> Fancy a coffee, she said. He realised his luck was in and started taking his clothes off, at which point he got kicked out of Starbucks. <laughs> they skipped hand in hand through the wood. Oh, look, he said, a yew tree. How appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> he was a strapping officer from World War I. She was disappointed with uniformdating.com. <laughs> Daisy was everything he looked for in a woman. Pissed with low self-esteem. <laughs> she danced as if no one was watching, but people were watching, and she looked like a twat. <laughs> At last, I have found you. I have found you. Is it really you? Are you Wally? <laughs> 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 
does this story have a happy ending? He asked her. She snapped back. Happy ending, $50. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Point at the end of the round for Rob, Woo! Ramesh and Andy. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ramesh Ranganathan and Rob Beckett. <laughs> Commiserations with Josh Willicum, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. <laughs>Don't get yourself in a tangle tomorrow. QI is here talking all things knits and knots with the letter K. That's at 10.